Hey everybody, in this video I want to do some significance testing using technology. We're going to focus on R and R Studio, but we'll also nod our heads in the direction of doing this on the web, just for those who don't have access to R. Um, here's the problem we're going to look at. We have gas mileages for a sample of 45 sports cars. The industry claims that the average miles, mileage for such cars is 23 and we worry that it's less. Again, these are um, population means that we're speculating about. So let's go over to R and get the data loaded in. I have the browser over here open to the appropriate folder. All I need to do is import it. So obviously we're only interested in the first column here, the gas mileages of the car in this sample. Um, the R command that we're going to be using here, let me zoom in a little bit so everybody can see it better give it maybe one more time, is going to be t.test and then you got to give it the name of the variable. So in this case it's ex6 underscore 2 underscore 33 is the name of the data frame, dollar sign name of the variable. Great, so when we do a t-test we have to obviously have a data set, a variable that we're testing. We have to have a null hypothesis, so let's feed that to R. In this case the null hypothesis is that the population mean is 23. The notation R uses is mu equals. Finally, we have to let R know what kind of alternative we want. So in this case, it's alternative equals less. And that's the fact that the alternative hypothesis was that mu was less than 23 miles per gallon. Great. So R is going to remind us that we're doing a one sample t-test. It's going to remind us that we have a sample of size 45 and therefore 44 degrees of freedom. And it's also going to remind us what the alternative hypothesis, hypothesis is, in this case that the true mean is less than 23 miles per gallon. It gives us a sample mean, 21.71. Obviously that's less than the, the population mean under the null hypothesis. It gives us a t statistic, and then in particular the p-value. This is saying that if the null hypothesis is true, data like ours, at least as extreme as ours, will only happen 0.5% of the time. So at uh, alpha equals 0.05 or even alpha equals 0.01, we would be rejecting the null hypothesis in this case. A couple other quick comments. Um, if you have a two-sided t-test, you can actually leave out the alternative and R will default to a two-sided alternative of not equal to. So that's worth knowing. The other default that sometimes comes up is if you leave out mu. This isn't useful for this example, but let's see it anyway. If you leave out mu, it will default to a hypothesis, null hypothesis mean of zero. So that's worth seeing. Okay, so finally let's do this with a web app. So I've just Googled one sample t-test calculator. You get about 153 million hits in about half a second. So any of these will work to one degree or another. The one I've been using is the single sample t-test calculator. It gives you a tiny bit of the theory that we can just skip right over. And then an opportunity to plug in your data right here. So the hypothesized population means 23. Um, here, instead of entering all the data by hand, I'm going to copy and paste it. One drawback of doing it this way is you're limited in your significance levels that you can use. And here we get a p-value of 0.001532, so the same thing. 